It's time for the breakdown on the PGA Championship. I'm sorry, Randomizer, you gotta go. I'm not leaving this to chance. One of my favorite shots of all time, Colin Morikawa, 16th hole, drove the par four, 295 yards, went on to make eagle. Terrific drive. And what I want to talk about is when you're driving a par four, there's a couple critical elements. One is aim, all right? You're trying to hit a green. You're trying to hit a green, and in his case, hit a green and make a putt. So the first and foremost thing is aim. What we want to try to do here is get behind the ball. We want to try to find our target in the distance. I have a little hole in the trees that I'm looking at. I'm drawing a line down, and then I'm really focusing here on my intermediate target. I'm really trying to make sure that my eyes are peeled right on that mark. So I'm going to go ahead and walk in eyes glaring at that spot set the face down first always really easy to see the face here because it's red which i love i'm gonna take my setup and then when i look up i'm gonna focus on my target in the distance the most so the actual target that hole in the tree so go ahead and take my setup look once waggle once and then go ahead and hit that felt pretty good a little bit to the left but definitely more of what i'm going for so the other thing that's really critical as well is making sure that you have some let go in your swing it's so easy when you have such a specific target to get really tense try to guide the ball try to steer it and what we need to do is once we're over the ball even though we're going to have such a tiny target in our mind small target small miss we need to feel at the same time like we could swing and we could hit it anywhere because their most unconscious swing is generally going to make you hit it the straightest so let's try that one more time i'm going to go ahead and tee up a ball I'm gonna make sure I find my intermediate target in addition to my actual target. So I got the hole in the trees. I got my intermediate target right down there. I'm finding that little piece of grass. I'm aiming the face first, lining up my stealth driver, looking at the window, and then going ahead and just swinging as freely as I possibly can here. Felt so good, even better contact than before. So that's really what we're going for. We're going for a great freewheeling swing, letting it go. And if you make a good swing with a good target, chances are you're gonna hit that green. Now, I wanna talk about some things that I really notice and really like, but that are kind of unique in Colin's swing. So let's talk about it. So Colin tends to play a fade. Obviously he plays it really, really well. And it's you know, more of a power fade. I think a lot of amateurs when they hear fade think of something weak, but he does something particularly well that allows him to get a lot of ball speed off the face and still control how much left to right spin he gets. So, what I would say, when I really look at Colin, I look a lot at how much he turns back versus how much he turns through. So if you look at his swing, if you watch his swing, he actually has pretty minimal hip turn going back. So generally the less you turn going back and the more you turn coming down, the more that you're gonna swing left. And the more for the right-handed golfer that you're swinging left, the more the ball is gonna tend to either be a pull or a fade. And so if you get really open at impact with not a lot of turn going back, it's very easy to fade it. Now, I think a lot of people, if they did that, would actually slice it. So I'll try to demonstrate that right here. So this would be not a lot of turn back, a lot of turn through, and you're probably gonna hit a slice. And you can see there, way off to the right, <laughs> off the planet, really. So there's obviously a missing ingredient there, and what is it? Colin has that kind of secret ingredient that a lot of players are now employing, which is that bowed left wrist. And so he does a great job at the top of his backswing and in the transition of getting that lead wrist to bow and making sure he gets that face in a strong position where he can really open up as much as he wants and the ball's generally not gonna go left. So with minimal hip turn back and a lot of hip turn through, without a bowed wrist, you can see that the face is gonna tend to be really open. So what Colin does so well, some of his secret sauce, if you will, is he goes back and as he gets to the top, you can see him kind of turning that grip away from him, hiding that logo, hiding my tailor-made logo, and then from there, really feeling like he's opening up but because the wrist is in a stronger position, the face is in a better spot, and the ball's just gonna start a little left and then cut back. It's not gonna cut all the way to the right. It's not gonna be off the map. It's gonna be right down the middle. So let me demonstrate a great feel for you. What you can do is take your setup. We're gonna go back, minimal hip turn, but really trying to feel like the wrist is in a good position at the top. From there, you're gonna really open up, almost like you're gonna face the target. You can see from here, my trail arm is still bent. My hips are really open. I'm off my foot. Colin gets way off of his foot early. After a couple practice swings like that, then we're gonna go ahead and hit. So bowed wrist, open the body up, should be a small little left to right cut. Let's see what we can do here. Exactly what I want. I feel like I just channeled my inner Colin Morikawa. Beautiful shot right down the middle. And so the key there is to match that wrist angle with the lack of turn back and a lot of rotation through. Hits that perfect little cut that obviously works very well for him. So the opposite can be true as well. So for a lot of you that are like, all right, that's great. I don't need to cut it. I already cut it too much. Well, one thing that you can try to do to draw it is feel like you have more turn back, a little bit less turn through, almost like you're letting the club head swing past your body before you turn through. So big turn back, back to the target, 
club swing through. And that's actually one way to an extent you control the ball flight. So if I want to hit more of a draw, I might just set up somewhat normal and then try to feel a big turn back and less turn through. So take my setup, big full turn, let my hips go a little more, let my shoulders go a little more, and then less turn through, feel like the turn's a little bit later. This should be a little bit more of a draw. And so this is a great drill. I'm gonna have you do it like this, then try to hit it straight, and then finish back at the fade. So big turn back, less turn through. So you can see there, nice little draw, definitely more of what we're going for with that particular swing feeling more turn, but feeling like that club's really passing your body. For those of you that struggle hitting a draw, maybe slice the ball, that can be a great fix. Now, for those of you that are like, I just wanna hit the ball straight. Well, let's try to match our turns. Let's try to make sure that we have a good turn back and through. And if we do those collectively, it should go pretty straight. So the pass should be coming from the inside if we're making a nice full turn, but then it will also be arcing back to the inside. And when you rotate left, that keeps the face from overly closing and it generally arcs that club back to the left so it's not too inside out. So same feel here, I'm gonna take my setup, reasonable turn back on a normal turn, normal turn through, I might feel that a couple times, turn back, turn through. Pretty basic thought, just turn back and through and try to watch that ball go straight down the fairway. So just like that, exactly what I'm looking for, back, same amount, through, same amount, and then, you know, from there, if you want to go back to try to feel that fade, I think that's an excellent feel. So finally, we're going to go back to kind of what Colin was feeling. We're going to go less hip turn back, more hip turn through. And then just will just give you a lot more confidence on how to work the golf ball. So take your setup, minimal hip turn back with the bowed wrist. Really try to get open. One more time, bowed wrist. Really try to get open and just hit that nice little cut. Love it. Nice little low cut right there exactly what I was going for. So understanding how to work the ball with your body, how much you turn back, how much you turn through, can make a big difference for your ability to control the ball and drive par fours. I want to thank all of you for watching. I want to thank Mission In for having us. And remember, make practice hard to make playing easy.